You know, I have this feeling like someone have opened a Pandora's box with neural nets last year. And today you can't even be sure that I myself, Zoomers, was not generated by some neural net. And today I can just ask a neural net to write a pretentious video intro about itself and it will do a good job. Midjourney and Dali that draw pictures matching the description you put in, lots of neural nets that remove object from photos and add anything you want just as well as Photoshop, can change your clothes and make it look completely authentic, convert ordinary photos into anime style art and create music. Just think about it, all these neural nets didn't exist a year ago. Back then we discussed deepfakes and thought, wow, that is real technological advancement, looks so realistic. And also a year ago we discussed Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse. But the idea of your avatar coming to life in the future pales in comparison with neural nets' abilities in our present. Today you are gonna find out, or rather, today I will show you how to actually use neural nets. We are gonna see if they can successfully flirt someone on a dating app instead of us and pick up a pretty girl. And the first thing we gotta do is create a Tinder profile for a guy. And we are gonna do it using a face generator. We are not gonna make him look like Henry Cavill, because then obviously girls are gonna fall for him just from that. We need an ordinary dude. Like this, for example. Just your typical boy next door. One picture is not enough for us, though we will make him smile and change his hairstyle using our neural net. And we will tinker with background for a little using a different neural net. We'll paint over everything behind him and on his clothes too, so he doesn't wear the same things everywhere. And our neural net will choose clothes. Damn, it's like I'm playing Sims for real. Uh, by the way, I will post all the links to the neural nets that I used in my video in the right order on my Twitter page. So click and subscribe, you can use them for free. So we are gonna register on Tinder. We'll call our guy Alexander, pick his interests and start swiping. Let's look at the matches we got. Let's finally open our neural net and see what GPT-3 wants us to write to these women. And it generated a message that makes it seem like our guy is an old poor wannabe intellectual who needs some change to buy beer. Let's try again. And once again it sounds like a typical pickup phrase from an English textbook. Let's try a different neural net. Here we have something a bit more fitting. Your appearance is very eye-catching. Well, let's go compliment our girls. Good thing, some girls write their Instagrams and contact info. So we can message them there without waiting for them to open Tinder. And when I asked it to give a compliment, it replied with this. Your eyes are so beautiful, clear like the stars in the night sky. Unfortunately, we cannot explain to our neural net that the times are different. And now people do not walk around talking like characters from Pride and Prejudice. But we are still gonna try it, and we are gonna ask for another compliment, something that would not make me sound weird. You are so elegant and charming, and your bright smile makes my soul happy. <laughs> Alas, but it still looks like a random, badly translated Instagram direct message from some foreigner. Meanwhile, the girl wants to talk about something other than her appearance, so let's help our neural net and ask her about her interests. This girl turned out to be a creative soul, we'll try to act the same, and the neural net suggested handcraft. Very cute, but what exactly is handcraft? Masturbation does not count. <laughs> yeah, she's funny. Let's ask the neural net what it meant. Handcraft is creating different objects from different materials. Sounds dry, so we are gonna rephrase it a little and make it more human. Do you want me to make a beaded bracelet for or, yeah, or a blanket. And she's clearly losing interest and tells me not to text like a crazy pedophile. This got me thinking for a second, so why do we even need Tinder? Here we have a boat that can create any naked woman for you according to your description, even your school teacher. 
and everything looks pretty realistic. The link will be on my Twitter page, again. Tinder is for boomers, real macho men choose cyber jerkoffs. But giving up is for boys, real men are never gonna be discouraged by sick pedo accusations. But this time we are gonna act smarter and ask the Neuronet to write a couple of replies at once. Meanwhile, we have a new match. Yeah, not bad, right? Let's go, GPT-3, do not let me down. We are gonna prepare a couple of messages in advance. So let's go. And using emojis at the end of sentences is a must-have, so we don't come off as sick perfs again. Everything goes pretty fine, and when asked about her day, she replies she wouldn't survive without coffee. Well, the Neuronet didn't disappoint and gave us a good pickup line. So they connected, and tomorrow we, I mean Alexander, will have a coffee date. Let's summarize. How well did Neuronets do this task? We are gonna evaluate it according to these points. Effortlessness. How much did it resemble text from an actual human being? Relevance. Did the replies match the girl's messages? Accuracy. Was everything stylistically correct or did it need to be fixed? I give effortlessness 3 of 10, relevance 7 of 10, accuracy 7 out of 10 again. And about that first point, if GPT-3 existed 200 years ago, it would be perfect for a prudish dance party attended by high society women. Also, considering the new ethic that have been firmly established in our society, the Neuronets avoid some burning topics and it's sometimes too innocent. I even decided to test its manners and get it to make a joke about Hitler, and I even managed to get one. But then the Neuronets seemed to come to its sense and said one joke was enough, and it wouldn't give me more. I wouldn't be surprised at all if it cleared the whole conversation while I was browsing other sites. As we all know, if you don't want to offend anyone with your jokes or remarks, you either have to stay silent or give some empty phrases and statements. And that's exactly what GPT often does. That's a pity. But because lots of people ask questions that could potentially cause troubles, like how to make an explosive, the Neuronet scope was limited. And it doesn't answer lots of questions not because it doesn't know the answer, but because it reasonably decides to just stay silent. And we all know that robots quickly learn bad stuff. For example, Neurosama bot says that it doesn't believe Holocaust was a sink and makes your mom type of jokes. What do I call a cow with two legs? Your mom. But they pull limits only on GPT-3 because it's very popular, but there are other neuronets. For example, one of them gives you an opportunity to prepare for a debate. Like you give it an argument and it gives you an argument to the contrary. Well, I can't wait to cause a bit of drama. Time for something controversial. I'm telling it that drugs are bad. And it tells me that not all drugs are bad. Well, okay, fair enough, yeah. Amphetamine is actually pretty great, right? It's just a joke. But seriously, medications are called drugs too, so it can't get away with an answer like that. Okay, I will tell it that heroin is bad. And it tells me that heroin is used in medicine and can be a great pain relief. Well, if you are that smart, Hitler is bad. And it replies that even though Hitler is a bad human being, some people believe his actions improved German economy and infrastructure. Now I see what Neuronet's Kanye West used the last couple of months when he said all those things. And I'm not sure I can show it on YouTube, actually I'm pretty sure I cannot, but this Neuronet just justified holocaust, suicides and racism. And it did it so exquisitely that I will post it to my Twitter page. And even though I fully support the freedom of speech, I realize that if someone who is mentally unstable asks some of these questions, the consequences can be pretty bad and unpredictable. But making it tell a joke about racism is not even the tip of the iceberg, it's bird poop on that tip. 
technically we did agree to meet up, but using GPT-3 to get to know people is not the best idea. So here's the answer is no. So far one point in favor of people. But everything can change. For example, there is PubMed GPT, a language model that learned everything through biomedical research papers. So if someone needs to write a thesis, keep this in mind just in case. I'm pretty sure there is gonna be a separate advanced language model for every field of expertise. And that's probably it for today. In a couple of days I will release a new video where I will mercilessly put the neural network to the test. So don't forget to put your bells, notification bells I mean, into the right regime. And see you in the next video.